Today I'm going to test three of Ping's most popular irons. Hi, I'm Paul, and this is The Golf Show. So three weeks ago, this happened. Ping called this the take control iron. I think you should call it the take my money iron. This is not just the best iron I think Ping have ever made. It's the best iron I've ever played. So since then, I've been looking for an excuse to get them back in my hands. So today I'm on one of the practice grounds here at Fulford. It's a bit misty at the moment. We're gonna have a head-to-head -head test with the I-230s against two of Ping's other best-selling clubs. We're gonna put them head-to-head -head against the I-525 player's distance iron and the beautiful blade-like I-59. So we're gonna see how those three Ping clubs compete against each other. And I'm gonna test them out in three ways. I've got a 150-yard shot here, sort of like a little green with some cones down there, see how we get on there. I'm also going to test them around the green. I want to see how soft they are because only one of these clubs is forged. One has a forged face. I'm used to playing forged PXG clubs. So I want to see how soft these clubs are around the green. Then we're going to head into the swing center and take a look at some numbers. But right now, we've got a ping thing going on. Did I really just say that? <laughs> the I-59 at the top, the head looks so much smaller. I think you're going to struggle to find three better looking irons though. Beautiful. Ping say that the I-230 is going to help you hit your yardages precisely with this tour proven player's style iron. It delivers consistent, predictable distance control and tight dispersion. The I-230 has got a more rounded leading edge which ensures smooth turf interaction for clean strikes. Ping say the I-525 with its forged miraging face gives you increased speed and distance while providing a pleasing feel and sound. The I-525 is packaged in a compact style player's head with weight around the perimeter to give you more forgiveness. The I-59 has been designed to give you a crisp, consistent impact, a solid feel with a flighty trajectory with added forgiveness as the result of aerospace grade aluminium. It's going to provide precise, reliable distance control and performance across every club. The face is engineered with the Micromax grooves, as are all the ping irons I've tested today. Okay, so before we start the test, if you're new to this channel, I just want to say a couple of things about the Golf Show. Firstly, I'm not a pro. My current World Handicap Index is 7.9. The reason I started the Golf Show was I thought it'd be more relatable to have someone like me who can spray it around a bit, testing clubs, rather than a pro who just sits out in the middle time and time again. And secondly, the Golf Show is 100% independent. We're not paid, endorsed, sponsored to promote anybody's goods. So if we like them, we'll tell you. If we really love them, we'll tell you. If we don't like them, I'll definitely tell you. Okay, let's get on with that test. Okay, first up, the I-230, and it's just as pretty as I remember. Let's hope it performed as well as it did last time. This is the seven iron. This is in the standard loft. All the clubs are in the standard loft. Of course, with ping, you can get a power loft, which is one and a half to two degrees stronger per club, or the retro loft, which is one and a half to two degrees weaker per club. This is 33 degrees of loft. All of these seven irons have got different loft on them, which is interesting. Let's see how we get on. Three balls, 150 yard target. Okay, first up, the I-230. I'm using Titleist AVX balls for all these shots. Oh, that felt great. Nice flight. Okay, not a bad strike, it's just drifted a little bit to the right of the green, just lost my balance a little bit. Felt amazing how the ball left the face there. Oh, that's right on it. Oh, that's really good. Eye full of mud, but it's straight at the target. Oh, really nice. Okay. Let's now try the I-525, the player's distance iron. As you can see on the neck here, there's no ferrule. These are all clubs that a pro would use for a fitting. Guy in the pro shops very kindly lent me these. The 525 is certainly a good looking club. Big difference in lofts here though. This is 30.5 degrees, whereas the I-230 was 33 and the I-59 is 34. These are all the standard lofts. Okay, three balls, 150 yards. Little bit off the toe. That's gone miles. Of 
got quite a thin top line on this. I would have thought this would have been slightly thicker than the i230, but it's actually a little bit thinner. Yeah, that's right on the flag again. Wow, really nice. Very impressed with that so far. So now we've got the i59 to go. I think I could have been a club fitter. I'd have had all the banter. What do you play off, sir? 18? And you're striking it like that? My goodness. You're a three handicapper in an 18 handicapper's body. Amazing. Would you like to buy some clubs? The i59. So Victor Hovland uses this. What's it going to be like in the hands of an eight handicapper? Not sure I'm good enough to hit this. Oh, flushed it. <laughs> Got to be honest, I'm just kind of delighted I hit the ball. This club head is tiny. It's actually just gone on the right hand side of the green. Not bad at all. Oh, pulled that one left. I had a similar strike with the 525, which was a bit more forgiving. That one, not so much. Oh, that felt amazing. Nice flight. Again, left of the pin, but not too bad. That's on the green. Let's have a walk down there and see which of those is closest. Not surprisingly, the Forge Club, the i59, felt really nice, really soft, but so did the i230, which isn't forged at all. The 525's got a forge face and a cast head. That just felt super fast. Obviously, that's got the less loft on it as well, so that's going to go a little bit further. Let's see who's got the closest to the target. Okay, so the nearest one is this ball here. That was a ping 230. Second nearest is there. That was an i230. And the third nearest is this one, which was a 525. So the 230 wins that test. Got another 525 here. Again, that's gone 170, 175. So clearly that club was too strong. I should have perhaps used an eight iron. The eight iron of that would probably be very similar to a seven iron in the 230. If ever I'm just off the green, but I can't use my putter, the seven iron is probably my go-to shot rather than loads of loft, unless I need to knock it over something like a greenside bunker. So let's see how these seven irons get on around the green. Really interested in the feel and the control I can get out of them, especially with these Micromax grooves that all these pin clubs have, where you're getting four more grooves on average than previous pin clubs. Okay, first up, 525. Okay, came off a bit hot. It's really like hitting a six iron. Really comes off the face super fast. I think you're going to leave it short with one of these. Hmm. Should have moved that camera further back. Are any of these still in frame? Okay. <laughs> okay. One brilliant five. All oh, two putable. Not a lot of feel off this, very firm, not a lot of control. Obviously, this has got a stronger face. That was more like hitting a six iron. Let's try the I-230. Beautiful. Just landing it before halfway, letting it run out. A bit harder, that one. Okay, not so good. That got a bit of a win through bounds. Okay, much better the 230. A much better feel, better sound as well. And this isn't a forged club. I'm really, really liking the 230. Okay, last in this test, we're going to go with the i59. All the pin clubs look amazing, but the i59 just looks futuristic, doesn't it? Beautiful. Victor Hovland won with one of these, shortly after putting it in the bag. I'm not getting ideas above my station, but I can't wait to try this out. This is the forged pin iron. See how close we can get some balls to the hole from 13 yards. Very compact head, very small. That was a bottom groover and it almost went in. More like it. Nice responsive face. 
can feel the ball springing off it. Blimey. A little bit of spin there off these Micromax grooves. With the Hydro Pearl finish, it's perfect for these sort of dewy conditions. Going to keep the moisture out of the grooves. My word. No, no, don't think, Paul. Don't even think about it. That felt so good. Go in. Wow. I-59, it's forged. It is buttery soft. Just as good as the I-230 there. Really enjoyed that. Okay, let's head inside and check out some numbers. The reason I'm in the swing centre is I want to hit a few shots on the GC2 with these irons. I want to see how far they carry. I want to see the spin rate and I want to see the descent angle, see if I can stop them into a green. That's going to be really interesting with that 525 with that super hot face and it having the stronger loft. So first up is the I-230. Oh, a string today. Interesting, it's gone literally the same distance, it's come down at exactly the same descent angle, but the spin was five and a half thousand compared to seven thousand. That's obviously got to be due to yours truly, but two nice strikes there. One more with the I-230. Oh, loving that flight. Okay, the 525 just doesn't look as inviting at address. Great strike. Push that one a little bit. Consistent distance again, consistent descent angle, inconsistent spin. I think that's due to me, to be honest, the eight handicapper. Now I'm going to try the I-59, which felt amazing when you hit it, but I think it's a little bit unforgiving if you don't catch it quite out in the middle. Let's see how we get on with that. Oh, that felt great. <laughs> what a club. How consistent are these pings? Mega. Oh, it's gone a bit right on me, I think. It would miss the green there on a par three. All of these clubs had the same shaft, but there was a big difference in the loft angle, which I think comes out in the numbers. The 525, not surprisingly, went the furthest and had the lowest descent angle, whereas the i59 with the most loft had the most spin. I was hitting it pretty well this day and all the numbers were pretty consistent apart from the spin but I am an 8 handicapper. Now I wasn't fitted for these clubs and I think this does show the benefit of getting a proper fitting by a PGA Pro. In summary, the 59 was beautiful but it just wasn't as forgiving if you missed it out the middle. The 525, I think there's always a danger you could catch the odd flyer there which could really throw you when you're playing into a green. And the 230 was super consistent. Okay, so that's the end of the test. Hope you enjoyed it. I really did. Ping is a brand that I've never owned, but I don't know why. They've always been there ever since I started playing golf 30 years ago, but I've never owned a set of Ping clubs, but that might change soon. They were fantastic. They all look brilliant, they all perform very well. It was interesting that the, the i525, which is perhaps the one that's saying more mid-handicappers, they're calling it a player's distance iron, well, I thought was the most intimidating at address. Really thin top line, and the ball fizzes off the face. You know, they were all seven irons. That felt like I was hitting a, a five and a half iron, so, that club wasn't for me, especially around the green. I do like to dink a few in with a seven iron and that just came off so hot. The i59 was beautiful. What a great looking club that is, but unless you're Victor Hovland, you're probably not gonna to wanna to play it. Even the likes of Lee Westwood and Tyrrell Hatton aren't gaming the i59, so that's not gonna be the one for me. The i230 was the one I was really interested in. I loved testing that two or three weeks ago and I was hoping it was gonna be just as good today. And it was, the numbers in the swing center were amazing. So it might be a trip to Gainsborough soon. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give us a like. If you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe? We've new episodes dropping on the channel every Monday. 
You can follow and interact with us on our socials. I'll put the details up next. That's all from me, guys. We'll see you next time on The Golf Show. I hope you enjoyed the episode of The Golf Show. To watch another, click here. To subscribe, click here.